everyone. Today we're going to resurface this stair set here using our TF structural repair mortar. Uh, there's an old river rock system on this stair set that's deteriorating and falling off, so we're going to remove all that, grind all this concrete, prep it properly, and then resurface the, the risers and the treads using the TF structural. So just to give you an idea, this project from start to finish was a five hour job and I was on the job site alone doing the work. So a fairly quick restoration that can be done using the TF structural and it was ready for foot traffic an hour after I drove away. And as always, the first step is preparing the surface for the TF structural. Um, we're at first removing all the old loose product using the jackhammer and once we get all that rock off which you can see here now we have to take grinders to this surface to remove all that old adhesive and glue to get down to a clean porous concrete substrate that's going to be what the tf structural needs to bite into um, the tf structural does not require any bonding agents primers or scrub coats its technology will adhere directly to concrete substrates okay so all the prep is done we have it ground down Nice, clean, porous concrete, ready for our uh, skim coat riser application. So this is interesting here, um, something I found underneath that decorative rock. It's a big expansion joint, which we didn't see before the job started. Kind of excited uh, that I found this because it'll give me a, an opportunity to show you some of the versatility and things you can do with TF Structural. So I came in and I just hammered some of this edge away just to give something more for the TF structural to bite into. So we're going to install it on this side of the slab, build a bit of a ramp because you can see there's a height difference here. And then once that sets, we're going to come back and skim coat all within probably half an hour because of how fast we can get the TF structural to cure. So when I was making the mix here to fill in this expansion joint and build this small ramp, I actually made it a little bit too wet. Uh, my intention at this point was to trowel it down in and if it was dry enough, it would wedge itself right into that gap. But you can see the product is slumping um, right through and falling down. The ideal way to have done this joint would be to stuff some backer rod, some foam or something down into that expansion joint so the structural had something to back against and not not fall right through um, so you saw I sped it up there but I just troweled the product and, and made it work and it does hold on to the edge and then I went and made a dryer mix which you see me installing now and as I work this product into the edge it will actually actually hold its shape and stay there on the edge so I, I could do it by hand but you can see how much more work this this step adds by not having that back rod in the in the gap there but I did want to leave this into the video just so you can see the versatility of the structural and this is the method that I actually did to fill this gap in and make about a six inch ramp there to remove the height difference. What's very important to note too is I did not connect these two concrete slabs with the TF structural. It is a very rigid product and any movement would cause it to break out so I did honor that expansion joint. Okay guys first thing I'm going to do is the risers on all the stairs. I'm going to let those set up and then we'll come back and do the treads after. Uh, the biggest thing for doing the risers is making sure you have a really good mix of consistency. Uh, that being you don't want it too wet so that it keeps slumping off and you don't want it too dry either that you can't get it to stay on. The biggest trick you're going to see that I use here is always keeping a trowel up on the top and I can trowel right into that and that helps push the product onto the stairs. Versus just troweling like this the product's going to want to roll off. At the start here, I had the base of the railing in my way, so I wasn't able to keep that top trowel underneath my other trowel. Uh, so I just had to work, work around that part. A uh, good thing I like to do is spread out the material along the top of the step, and then you can just scrape it right onto your trowel. You don't want too much. And just press it right into the middle of the step, not down at the bottom where you'll end up with too much buildup, and trowel it up into that upper trowel so it just sticks right on the stair. And any excess that falls off, you just push right into the base. And you just keep re repeating this process as you move down along the step. And as I'm about a third or a halfway down, I go back and do the finish step on it. Same process, just spend a little more time on it, working that trowel up with differing amounts of pressure to just smooth out that riser face into a, 
the point you're happy with and just continue all the way down as such. Um, rather than skipping frame by frame here, I wanted to just speed up the actual process so you can see the whole, whole step of doing this. You do the first riser and then you go back and make another mix and start the second riser. That way you don't have too much product sitting on the stairs or in your bucket because over time the TF structural will start to cure, especially when it's in volume, if you left it in a bucket. So you just work your way down this step and again you place the product on the riser. It doesn't have to look too amazing at the beginning uh, and you can go back and finish it with your trowel to get a nice smooth so about 45 minutes to an hour after those risers were installed, I started the skim coat process. Um, I didn't do too much video on that front pad. It's hard to see it, but I'm spending some more time on this, this main pad here. Um, yeah, you just spread your product up at the top and start working it back. You can see I'm using the trowels along the edges just to prevent the material from uh, overflowing onto the edges. And we do have some pretty good skim coat videos that you can spend some time watching and just get more familiar with this process as well as using those edge trowels and how to put the broom lines into it. Um, you do see that I'm, I'm using the broom with my hands and it's not attached to a pole just with the restricted space I'm dealing with here, um, the railings and whatnot. It was pretty hard to keep the broom on a pole so I just was using my hands and reaching up and going back and forth trying to get the lines as straight as possible and I continue that process for the two treads as well. Again, we have some videos on other staircases so you can see a bit more in depth of how to apply the product to treads and put the broom lines into those. And here's your final finish that you get, a nice broom finished overlaid concrete pad. Again, this was a five hour process from start to finish with one installer. And uh, the customer was able to walk on this an hour after installation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's any videos you'd like to see, please leave it in the comment section below. Definitely subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. And if you hit that like button, that's going to help us keep these videos coming. Thank you.